Okay, um, yeah, good evening. Hope everyone's having a good evening tonight. And yeah, we're going to get started with a quick uh, VOD review of Popa Ducks? I don't know quite, quite know how to say it. Let me know if I'm close, though. Um, Brackets practice run. So going right into the deep end, uh, Popa's been around for a while. Uh, well, by a oh, while by Duck standards. He's been playing for a, a few seeds here uh, and recently been getting quite a bit better. I know these are from probably a week or a week and a half ago or something at this point. So I'm assuming you've continued to improve. So some of the stuff I'm sure you'll be able to identify uh, yourself rather than even needing me to point it out. But we'll give it a best shot. Um, oh, it is Papa, man. Between you and Shum Bobby. Uh, okay, <laughs> Papa dudes. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, we're gonna take a quick look. So brackets diving right into the deep end. This is not a. Brackets are not the best like set to learn on, but at the same time they have lots of ideas that will help you. Um, if you can play well in brackets, you can probably play well in other flag sets, but it's not very good at teaching you things, and it teaches you a bunch of weird habits because of monster in a box and other stuff. So I'll be pointing it out for like brackets point of view, but a lot of this doesn't apply um, to all flag sets. So yeah, let's get started. Oh, let's turn mute on there. Um, so of course, the blur sins make a difference. Uh, so one note, plus X cal is actually a lot better than it looks. Minus ripping is really bad. Um, because it means that you can go now. The, the knight now has two swords that can go into Topher, or the the fighter has two swords that can go into Topher unpromoted with, which is really good. It's fighter, black, black, fighter, black, red, black. Okay, yeah. So fighter red, uh, like the uh, strawberry Oreo, as I call it. Um, this party is totally fine. I'd like to put my black mages back to back rather than fighter black, red, black. The reason for that is just so that way I have more consistent menuing always. Uh, but if you like this because you like to click down to cast life, then this is okay. But just a small note. Oh, okay. Don't. Uh, okay, that I actually don't like doing. So yes, the red mage has more HP, but in general, you don't want to put your red mage in slot two. Generally, you want your red mage in slot three. Yes, it will have better armor, but the fact that it usually has life means that um, you would way rather your black mages get killed off. Um, but it, it's okay. But just a note that I used to always play it in this exact order, and then I changed it and started playing it in the other order. Just a, just a note. Hey, Rock Solid. Oh, 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 okay. There's, there's a two force, so that wasn't two choices. That was, so you picked black mage, red mage then, for, with a forced fighter black mage. Oh, that's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> pretty good party. Like, Fighter Black Mage here would have been just like, like, this party would have been pickable just straight up. I guess one of the only issues with it is just uh, lack of ribbon on your life caster, but, well, your potential life caster. Tier 4 is really good. Of course, note that that's Knight Learnable. Oh, is the Force bottom too? Okay, I, I it, everyone sets up their party slightly differently. Yeah, you were cycling through the Fighter, so. middle two <laughs> okay <laughs> so something that you need to do in monster in a box is actually check your inventory at the beginning i don't know if you did i don't think you did though uh but you want to check if you have tents or cabins because i like to buy a cabin or a tent before i go to tof if you don't have one there's a 25 percent chance of having zero tents i think according to wildem's post so that's pretty high Sword's good. Okay, it's just a two cabin. Okay. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't have bothered equipping that iron minus one, but it's fine. So my general rule with armor is if, if you're not equipping a chest piece or a, like your first weapon or your end game weapon, it's not worth it. Uh, pro rings, ribbons are the exception. I'll just wait until I save a few up, but it's okay. If it saves you a wipe, so be it. But like here, your knight's dead anyways. TNT Oxia, okay. And the cube's for sale. It'd be nice to be able to pick up the cube before you leave, but I don't think you have the money. Yep, 
good. So far, nothing. Oh, let me check one thing. It's hard to see at the speed. Um, I think it was good though. Your Topher time, your your Canary blip timing looked about as good as as average. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. Whoa, what the heck? Uh, I went. Oh God. Okay, sorry. Please hold. looking good i think you've obviously been playing a bunch and watched a bunch of stuff so this is not just a pure you know it, it's a pretty solid start yeah i like taking these fights on the way Uh, just one note here, you should keep in mind that your knight can learn cure 4, uh, that's like one of the big notes, so cube and knight can learn cure 4, that's kind of what you're, you should be remembering at this point. There. Uh, I would not reset out of that monster in box. Uh, the reason is to, uh, you, you might want to kill it. Like, at least see the monster in box. Monster in box can be a great source of EXP, like, yeah, it's scary, but monster in box can be a fantastic source of EXP in the early game. Uh, like, you know, if it's something that you can kill with lit 3 easily. Yeah, your charges are a little bit low, but... Okay, this is going to be a fast seed. To save a step by uh, taking the double river system back there, it's pretty minor, but just a note. Because each step into and out of water is a free step, so uh, by going through two lakes instead of one, you actually save two steps. Yeah, that's, oh, that's fine. I mean, I don't really care if people make mistakes, especially when they're learning. What I care about is that they know that it was a mistake. If they knew it was a mistake, it's the, the fact that they made it, unless you make it like for 40 seeds in a row, in which case you need to work on something. But once in a while, it's totally fine. I mean, heck, you watch me play. I'm going to make bad plays all over the place. I like the taking of fights on the way here. Level 6 is a decent place to be. So this is a pretty easy crescent lake to Sarda. Curious that you didn't check magic there. I would have at least checked black magic for fast. But I know you can't afford anything, but like it's good to know if you need to come back to Crescent Lake or not. Is the th what's the thinking behind not checking? Is it just that like obviously can't obviously you can't afford anything. Um it's just like now, if you don't have fast, which is going to be pretty bad, you're going to have to like leave and then come back, and like you're going to be searching all over the place. So if fast happens to be level six in Crescent Lake. It's really important to know early because it influences your level strategy. You're going to want your black mages, right? Um, and, and then you come back. So I, I would almost always check the black magic there. Also, white magic, um, your red mage can learn slots uh, two, three, four, right? Once they promote. So I would also be checking the white magic for life. So we always say go to Sarda next, but the play here is actually go to Provoka, right? Because we haven't checked Provoka yet. It's just really unusual. Uh, uh, so usually play Black Belt, so I don't promote it to the top of level 5. So that's fair, but also I would still check with bl Black Mages, uh, the level 6 shop. Like, you get, level s you get fast at level 16, and the Black Mages don't need to be promoted for a number of slots there. So... I would still then at least bare minimum check the black shot. But with this comp, you almost like even if life is level six, like you're gonna want it quite badly. Like the fighter needs life, so um Well, the fire comp doesn't need life, but it really wants life. Okay, herb, that's good. Mm -hmm. Oh, you got Did we get the PNT somewhere? Oh, oh, did we get it from the Sages? Okay, or we got the Adamant from the Sages. Okay. Okay, okay, that's fine. Crown. So 
so small thing, I might have actually turned the herb in first. The reason is because if that's the key, then I want to check Dwarf Block while I'm there, but that's fairly minor. Uh, level 7 is right around the breakpoint of where you don't want to take inner sea fights anymore. Not that it's that big of a deal, because you're probably stopping anyways because you're flying, but in, um, in non-floater seeds, that's a good thing to know. Same thing with sea fights. Around level 7, you don't really want to take sea fights anymore. Or, more like 6, but... Oh, that's really nice. So that I do equip right away, because once I equip, I'm never moving it, right? So, like, let's look at that iron armor, like, iron gr bracelet. One, it's, like, five absorb, or, like, four absorb. It's, like, nothing. And two, you never got hit since you equipped it, so, yeah. Just, like, not equipping armor, going into the menu less is, is good. Uh, crystal. Okay. So, something I really don't like is the fact you haven't gone to provoke yet, but... It is actually good because you're getting more money before you go check the shops there, so that's pretty fair. This is super, super jetty seed. Um, so yeah, you definitely lost some time somewhere, because like, I would expect this seed to be... I guess you have no good magic, so I would expect it to be like at sub-hour, but... Or sorry, not sub-hour, like hour 05. But I mean, you almost hear, like, you have so many of your go mode items. It depends on what your level 2 magic is. Okay, slab. We can turn that in, of course. Whoa. Okay. What is going on? I am assuming this is just execution. But, actually, no. This is just execution. You know better. But I, I want to say you lost, like, 10 seconds just menuing here, which is, like, super awkward. So you haven't found pro rings yet, I don't think, unless you have. I saw gold bracelets, but I might check the armor shop for pro uh, for pro rings. I would also um, check for chain armor for your fighter, but that's pretty minor. Uh, lock is worth worth picking up there. Um, I'm not sure why you didn't. So you got like a couple thousand. You check white magic. So heal 3 is fantastic here. Check black magic. You got a decent chunk of money. I know you want to buy the cube probably, but... Whoa, okay, that spell prioritization is a little bit weird. Um, so lock, I would almost certainly buy on your... At least your red mage and one of your black mages. But like at level 2, you really do want those lock charges. And then uh, heal 3, I think, is a spell that will save you so much time over the course of the seed that it's just 100% worth picking up, right? So, uh, those are definitely spells you want to keep an eye out for. Hmm, interesting. Or deals without... So you haven't... So one thing I don't like about this is that I don't think you've checked Elfland Magic yet, and this would Elfland Magic would save you a ton of time. Um, if you get warp, right? Like, when you're doing ordeals, you really do want warp. Like, yes, people want to go to ordeals as fast as possible a lot of the time, but... With the early floater, that's not really near. It's not nearly as true as it was before. Um, also, I guess this is fine. You're you're just gonna use a house, right? Um, and you're trying to get a little bit of experience. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. The red mage was in. It was in the red mage. Of course, like in vanilla, can't get heal three. Um, yeah. You're still kind of poor, but like, what are you saving your money for? Like the most one of the best things you can have at this point is heal three. So like I think heal three is like an auto buy for for three hundred bucks. I noticed this that was another uh the person my, money who I did last time was also like super concerned about going broke. But like the only item you really 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 need to be concerned about going broke with is the uh is if you don't have the shop item and you're like in the early game right. But here you know where the shop item is it's the cube for like two k. I mean yeah you want money for Elfland but you're going to be getting that on whatever you do next. And, like, I would have even considered, like, a potential Cardia dive, as much as I hate that, just to get some money after doing, like, the slab turn-in. Um, but, like, 300 bucks for heal 3 is, like, such a steal. And same thing with lock, just so you don't have to double-dip Provoca. Heal 3 is one of those spells that's not so good on the night, so, like, you, I wouldn't be going back, but... Oh, not taking Red Mage almost ever. That is almost certainly a mistake. The Red Mage is probably the most broken class in uh, Final Fantasy Randomizer. Wow, that's the best ordeals ever. Okay, never get punished for warp. 
Uh, yep, this is a great tile. Uh, to, ooh, not such a great tile anymore, but hopefully they have no HP. They have HP. But still, okay, so I wouldn't take this multiple times, but once is obviously fantastic here. You're gonna get a ton of uh, money and levels. So yeah, you could have been punished really hard there. Yes, that that uh, box is generally fairly free, but if that was a monster in a box, you would have died. So just once again, bracket things. Got to heal. Ooh, this is aggressive. I would not do this because the the cremates are scary. Um, but fair enough. It it is a good tile, and I mean they have, but they just have a lot of HP. But it's pretty good. I do like that you bought heal pots in the early game. That helps quite a bit. So far, so good for the most part. Um, ooh. I don't love sitting on this tile, but I mean, it will get you the early levels that your party desperately needs. Um, eh, it works. It is great levels. And, and one of the most important things in Monster Box is getting early levels. So, I mean, no, I, I, I guess it works out. I, I, I feel like they were so beefy, I just wouldn't have done it again, but that's fair. Yeah, a little concerning here with the Lightning Breach Hunters, but that's fine. Once again, I'm also used to there being like unrunnables, which makes it, it makes a difference. Okay, nice run. Ruby is dud. So that's really unfortunate. That makes your ordeals play. I mean, you got a ton of levels, which is great, and you got some gold, so overall not terrible, but uh, that does make the ordeals play not pay off super well. So at this point, right, you're, you don't want to do marsh and ice because it's ship canal, right? Uh, there could be a trolley key there, so don't forget that, but marsh canal is probably a no-go. Um, so yeah, just things to keep in mind. Area is not actually worth that much EXP, but eh, it's fine. So at this point, the, the play is definitely Elfland, probably to Melmond, and then go beat Earth. Although you could skip Earth if you don't want to proximity route it. Yes, but. Okay, let's see. Okay, we're super rich. Oh, so that warp is really bad for you. Um, like, it's really good for you, but it could have made your... This makes your ordeals play, like, deeply questionable, because if ordeals was bad, you could have wasted four minutes in or, or two, three minutes in ordeals while your opponent spent no time at all. So just keep that in mind. Okay, magic is... This is such a jet seed. So I think at this point I would be expecting this to be, like, a sub... Okay, so you buy lock, but the problem with ha having lock at the same level as nuke is it's a lot worse than, ha worse than having lock at level 2. Oh, okay. So you realize it at this point, and then you go back anyways? This is just the jettiest feed seed ever. Holy smokes. Okay, buy the cube. Good. I was I'm just happy you remembered that. So you're in fantastic shape here. You have everything you need at this point. You're just in dungeon cleric mode. So you have the oxtail. Um... You have the it's promotion locked. Uh, you have the slab, so this makes sense. Okay, and there's fast. So yeah, level six magic, no lock. Oh yeah. Wait, did you buy life? No, I don't. I don't think you did. Level six magic magic might matter for life, but for the most part, it's not super important. Uh, so you didn't translate the slab while you're in Melmond. So not great. That's something obviously. This is just like, I don't know why you were checking Melman. Like, so I thought the reason you were going to Melman to check magic was because you were going to Melman to translate the slab to check magic, but that didn't really make sense. So, Melman, basically, with level 5 magic, yeah, you can cast it, but like, you had nuke, you had warp, you had exit. Like, you're, you're basically done in terms of dungeon diving magic. Like, I would only go to Melman when I go translate the slab, which is what I thought you went to there to do, and then you didn't, so. Oh, okay. So your brain was right, your execution was wrong. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. Good plan, bad execution. Cool, so we do, we're we gonna do Waterfall first here. Wow, this encounter table's super good, too. Okay, 
I take it back. The seed is subhourable for sure. Unless it's like the worst ever everything else, but like I guess if there's no sword and no ribbons, that could be problematic. But this seed probably is pretty fast. The levels are so, the the magic is so is really good and the um, the gear is really good and ice and marsh can just be skipped, which are all really important. Good. I I like taking fights in waterfall until about level twenty. So that's why waterfall is actually like people like um, ordeals a lot. I actually like waterfall a lot. The reason I like ordeals over waterfall is just because uh, waterfall doesn't have like waterfall if you don't have the oxtail it's not so good to come here versus ordeals can just kind of be done in isolation but like waterfall is a really nice dungeon to, to clear for some levels as well it has a very similar place and then it's like kind of that mid game dungeon that you can get good levels off of yeah that's a good decision ooh how are those thieves Okay, so 23 minutes in, and th other than freaking to translate a slab, looking pretty good. Wow, and the chime. So, yeah, 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 if you have ship, yeah, yeah. Yes, I agree. So if you have the ship, ordeals is better. If you have the floater, then it's not so good anymore. Like, it's just fine then. Ooh, scary, don't screw you, come on. Oh god, lost us of cremate. So this is definitely the right decision to open that box. You need a weapon really badly, so uh, this is the correct decision. It's just a little unfortunate that that happened. But that's fine. No, no real harm. So at this point, you have all the tools to go kill Kraken, so I would definitely go do so. Um, the only issue is that you haven't translated the slab yet and you haven't turned it in, so you don't know if this is like if you need the item in here, and that's why you kind of want to do that before you come to. So the general rule is that like with with such an early floater, you want to know as much information as you can before you dive sea and sky, so you know if you need to clear them or not, right? And we have marsh and ice with the troll key, but otherwise they're not going to be required. Um, at this point, if I understand correctly, you have oxail rod loot or is oxail rod chime cube um but i don't think you have the loot or the key if i understand if i if i remember correctly so knowing the slab is the key for example you could just be in go mode and then you don't need to check um see if you don't want to now of course you don't have a sword so like you know you're going to want to check some boxes but like it, it definitely makes a big decision so that's why getting information earlier rather than later is, is really good So deciding to go mermaids first, this is not a bad decision. I think with nuke you, and the levels you have, I, you could go kraken side first, but going mermaid side first is fine as well. So the decision mermaids first versus uh, kraken first is, one, can you kill kraken? If no, go mermaids first. <laughs> uh, two, do I want to open more boxes and or do I want levels regardless? Um, and if the answer is yes, then you can go mermaids first as well. But in most cases, you want to go kraken. So equipment was the main reason I did C first. By C you mean mermaids, or C in general over slab? I'm assuming you mean mermaids, in which case, yeah, that's totally fair. Uh, don't forget, too, that you can get free steps by walking along the bottom of this room. But, like, mermaids, or C over sky is generally the wrong play, um, in terms of, like, getting chests and things like that, but... Uh, the fact that you were going to do Waterfall anyways makes C a better play. But just like in general, if you're choosing between C and Sky, uh, Sky is usually just like a slightly better play. C in general over Slab. So that I disagree with because even if like you want equipment, it's better to know whether you're opening boxes by force or whether you're opening boxes because you want specific items. Because if you just want specific items, you don't check like TFC, right? But if you need... Because, um, right, it, if you need incentive items then you're checking all of c but if you just need uh gear then maybe you're just checking high uh chest density locations also like volcano armory all of a sudden goes up in value if you're just checking for items versus um if you're forced incentives then it's a different story so getting the information first is generally good but this is fine like there's nothing wrong here i i would have just done slab turn in beforehand so i have a little bit more information these freaking gersharks are beefy man but burning your resources here is fine. Your levels are really good. Something I've really liked is that you've been like totally willing to take fights along the way, and it's made a big difference in your safety. The play that I maybe wouldn't have made has actually p benefited you a lot, so 
kudos to you for um, grinding that those beefy Gersharks for to get those levels up to like 15, 16, where you're in like really good dungeon clearing mode. Uh, giants aren't really worth it here, but it's fine. Oh, I, oh, you need to check for white shirt. Never mind. Because I, sorry, monster in a box still throws me off sometimes. Excalibur. Uh, that's unpromoted, um, non-promotion locked, right? So you can equip that right now. Um, and definitely should be doing so because that sword is a massive improvement. No, no, oh no, you don't remember. Oh no, so you had plus Excalibur. Really unfortunate. That's okay. Uh, slightly faster here to use warp than it is to walk back. Very marginal though. Oh yeah, we take this. So the plan here is to uh, exit out and then house up. Which I'm assuming is what you're about to do. Yeah, definitely could have used it, which would be huge actually. It would really increase your um, your capabilities. It also makes it so this party can easily go uh, tailless, I think. Uh, Cure 4 of course is nice on the knight, but... Also, that's another consideration for your levels here. Um, you probably want at least like two charges of cure four, and you're not gonna, you know, if you if you level up too much in advance, you're not gonna get it. Now, Excal, the breakpoint for it's 29, so you want to be level 29 on your knight. At this point, would be I would. So what I my, what my thought process here would be is that I want to kill off my black mages, and two man with my red mage knight combo. Um, Ideally, I promote first, but maybe you just don't care about Cure 4. So if you kill off your Black Mages on Kraken, you can put more levels on your Knight. The reason for this is because you want that Knight to be level 29, ideally, which is really high. Um, and that means you're going to want a two-man through Sky with your um, Knight and your Red Mage, ideally. Now, this is a little bit higher level strategy, maybe something that you haven't considered too much, but just... It's not higher level, it's not fancy, it's just like a little bit more unconventional, because like, you, yes, you have Nuke, yes, that, but like your late game plan here is your Knight with Fast, um, you have the power bong. So I would want to get my knight to 29 if at all possible, and therefore I'm almost certainly going to need to two man, because there's no way I'm like formatting this party up to 29. And I also don't want to take a stash stationary grind. Uh, 29 is pretty high though, so if you decide to go in lower, so be it. But regardless, you want your levels on your knight and your red mage on this party. Your black mages just need fast charges, which at this point they already have three at level 20, so like they're basically done. Your black mages are just keeping your party safer, but they're not really things that you need any more levels on than what you currently have. I guess you don't have life, though, which is a bit of an issue. So still searching for an incentive. Of course, a ribbon would be nice, but the ribbon's not going to go on your um, red mage, which is really unfortunate, but having it on your knight would still be huge. That's another reason having some extra levels on your red mage and knight would be nice for extra, excuse me, uh, MD, M death. Yeah, pr fighter breakpoints are super, super important. The good thing is that there's only three you really need to care about, which is Excal, Vorpal 29, Masa 24. Those are going to be your endgame sword 95% of the time, and if you, it's not one of those two swords, I'll just grind until I see the hits count I need. But for most other swords, you're only going to be getting four hits, which you should be getting somewhere in your mid-20s. And, and remember, if it's plus or minus, then you add or subtract one level. Beefy Gersharks return. This is just like the mascot enemy of this seed, is just Gersharks. This is actually good. <laughs> this is where you kind of want don't mind if your black mage stays down. But Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I think I think learning fighters and learning black belts is like a really good thing for any new player, like regardless of whether there's draft or things like that. Um, but definitely something to, that you need to consider. And, and they do play differently, right? Like, as you said, like, I was talking to Fizzle on comms the other day, and, and like, everything he said, I was like, uh, what? That's weird. Is like an always, whoa, I would take these sorcerers for sure, but anyways. That's weird. Is like an always do this. But then I realized that he, all, like, basically has only been playing fighter comps, and all of his thoughts were, like, fighter comp, walk and grind speed and power. It was, like, a very specific Fizzle style of play, and that made it so that, um, like, those plays were obviously correct, but they weren't obviously correct for all parties in all situations. They were just correct in the parties that he mostly ran for the party, or for the situations that he was mostly in. Um, so, yeah, that, 
that's just interesting. Uh, but these sorcerers do 100% kill. They're worth a ton of EXP, and unlike the Gersharks, they have like under 200 HP at most. So this is where like heal three really would come in handy because this is where you want to be healing three. Oh, this this is not a good idea. So these lobsters have cremate. Your uh, fighter should be running, but your red mage should almost certainly be casting like nuke here. Um, the reason is your red mage sucks at running, and the most likely way for the red mage to get out of the fight is to nuke. Um, so this is really dangerous. I would even probably nuke with my black mage just because the black mage is probably something like 50, 60 percent to run, maybe a little higher. But nuke will almost certainly get you out of this fight. So this is scary. Okay, so you get away, but, whoa, and also you really should be healing. Like, those lobsters have cremate. If they ambush you, you're dead. If you get ghosts, you're dead. You really, really need to be respecting uh, Sea Shrine here more. You also don't want to be going on to Kraken with two people. Are we out of heal pots? What is going on? Okay, okay. Oh, boy. That's... This, this, is, this is some disaster. Not, not, not strictly your disaster, but this is a, this is a disastrous scenario. So, let's let's back up and see what we could have done differently. So, your heal pot numbers are good. You've been doing a good job of prepping for this. You have basically everything you could want except for heal three. But you have heal pots, and heal three is not that important, right? So this sea wipe, I would say, is a hundred percent avoidable. Um, so there's a free step right there, but that's fine. So your routing is fine. You did mermaids first. You got your levels. Everything is pretty good. Your fight selection is a little bit questionable, but it's not terrible. It's just like really, really beefy fights that take multiple rounds. Even if they're worth good EXP, are not like the best thing to just burn all your spell charges on. But it's it's fine. Okay, so this that happens. Your black mages were gonna die anyways. This three-person party can, is totally fine. You can get through Kraken. Yes, you have limited cure fours, but you have heals. So even at this point, you want to be healing your party up. You don't want to be healing every single step, but your armor is terrible at this point, right? You have no ribbon. Um, healing is going to be super, super important. Okay, so once again, this is a beefy party, but now we're starting to decide to save resources, which I like. And we're healing, which is good. We have 80 plus heal pots. So heal pots, we are not running out. Unless you go up and down a million times, you're not running out of heal pots. Okay, this is all fine. And this is where things start getting suspicious. So our HP totals are okay, but not great. And then we hit this lobster pack, and you're defaulting to running, but these two characters, the fighter runs probably 40% of the time here, the red mage probably runs 40% of the time here, and the black mage probably runs 60% of the time here, or something around that. Right? So in order to maximize your chances of getting out of cremate lobsters, because if all seven of these cast cremate, your party's dead. If they punch, you're dead. You almost certainly want to be running nuke, nuke, or some combination of that, because this is an extremely dangerous encounter. Now, luckily, you got lucky, but like, you saw how much damage that cremate did. And then after that, we're continuing to walk. And now, if, if you were a expert runner and knew exactly where you were in the encounter table, then sure, I've seen spells happen. Crab cakes get away with this all the time because they know how much further they need to walk before they open a box and they're going to heal before they open a box. But for anyone else, heal. Because, like, if you get hit by that lobster pack again, you're almost certainly going to die. Luckily, you only got a single lobster. Yeah, swing, 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 run, run here is a better play. So that, that time you got punished, and it's actually the easier pack. It was only a single lobster, but you didn't play for the maximum chance of getting out, which would have been a swing, run, run. Um, so yeah. Okay, this is insanity. So we're walking onto the spike tile with no HP, not equipping the ribbon we just picked up. And then we're doing it again. So remember I talked earlier about the importance of equipping certain items right away like so i i really harp on people for equipping items too frequently especially when they're in like big chest boxes but ribbons you pick a ribbon up you equip it pro rings you pick a pro ring up you equip it the reason is because they save from insta deaths which are like brutal and can just come out of nowhere unless you know exactly what the enemies in a dungeon have you almost certainly want to do it and now we're gonna get punished hard and goodbye so this was a huge time loss um that was not entirely avoidable you could have been baned but you would have at least survived with your knight. I mean, 
that be awkward, but you know, it gives you a much better chance. And you could have easily had three people up there, and maybe your knight and a black mage survives, and then your dive still could succeed. So, yes, that was bad luck, but that's the type of bad luck that was like very, very avoidable. Or the the bane wasn't avoidable, but there was a lot of things you could have done before the bane occurred that would have made that a lot safer. Also, with four, three party members up, you would have had a better chance of running or getting nuke off or all those other things. So, hopefully, that makes sense about like some of the ways that you could avoid that in the fu in the next time that happens, but. So as a small note here, I would probably be checking Sharknado once I hit the Sharknado floor rather than going back to that chest. The reason is just because it's likely that Sharknado has it, and if it doesn't, you can go check those two chests later. Uh, but that's pretty, pretty small optimization. Uh, do you have any questions on that? Like, I know that might have been a little bit harsh, but I didn't really mean it in like a you know terrible. But just that like. I see a lot of ducks who are like, oh, I got baned and I died. But the bane was not really the thing that you could have avoided. It was all the other stuff, right? And then that made the bane more dangerous than it had to be. So hopefully that makes sense. So there is nothing here that you care about other than the ribbon. So I guess if you want some EXP, but like I wouldn't purposely be taking these types of fights. Um, but, you know, that's fine. Let me know if you have any questions along the way. No one's given advice there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean the other thing is like tilt happens, right? And and like once things start going a little wrong, you can like compound mistakes, right? That happened in my spring tournament matchup where I was like, oh well, you know this bad thing happened, and then I'm gonna make another bad play to try and make up that bad play, but two wrongs don't make it right. Um, and in my case, maybe it was justified, but like I had made I made bad mistakes prior to the thing that looked bad on stream happening, and that is what ultimately caused it. Um, like like these these plays here, I wouldn't be making just because like these chests don't have anything valuable, so I don't know why you're spending the time to like go back and reopen them. Um, gear does not all you know gear is not all the same. There's some gear we care about, and there's some gear we really don't care about, and uh, that qualifies in gear that we don't care about, especially three thousand. So things you've done well for Monster in a Box, you got early levels, which is awesome. Uh, your inner sea navigation was, of course, fine, but you know, it was kind of bailed out by a super early floater. Um, well, yeah, Sorcerer's for experience, that's fine. And if you could Gear Shark for experience as well, that's that's okay. So obviously we're going to pick up the ribbon here. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, so I would have been thinking here that like the only thing I care about is the ribbon, but that's fair. Okay, so we're going to go check this chest. Don't forget about your free steps again along the bottom of this room. So it's in Sharknado. A little bit odd. I probably would have routed and checked these chests first, but before I checked on that spike, because I'm not going to check this box. You've already found a ribbon and an exhale. You're basically done, right? Like You're you're in essentially gear go mode at this point. Exhale's not the best, but it's passable with fast and power block. Um, I'd be pretty close to done with boxes and just be aiming for my fighter at level 29. So this comes down to my favorite discussion on win conditions here, right? A and your win condition here is pretty clearly a fighter. Ideally, it's a knight with light cure 4, which you're about to get, which is, is huge. But you have a knight with an Excal, the tail, uh, cure 4, and the power gauntlet. That's a pretty good win condition. Like, even if you have a mage go down per fight, you're going to be able to have um, fast casters, right? And hopefully you can find life on that white mage, so or that red mage, so. Yeah. But yeah, this room you routed a little bit funny. So at this point, I would no longer be opening boxes, but I understand if you're looking for a slightly better sword than an Excal, because the crit rate will absolutely hurt, and you don't have, you know, evasion, so there, there is risk. But I think between nuke, the power bonk, fast, and lock, you probably can get through. Uh, Topher, if my fighter's level 29. Oh, come on, heal. Okay, good. Okay, so what's the prep for the Kraken? Okay, so you healed, which is good. Oh, okay, so 
this is okay, but your fighter's not really wearing any good armor. Now, I guess you're not equipping the x on your knight, so maybe the knight's just there for a meat shield, so I guess you're going to go swing nuke nuke nuke. And, and that's reasonable. Okay, so this I don't so this I don't like. So the reason I don't like this is this is you're not committing to a single play. If your knight is going to be what you're going all in on, your knight needs to be in the bottom, which I mean would have gone back road, but eh, you know, that's the way it goes sometimes. Um, if you're gonna go fight or nuke nuke nuke, I think this play makes sense, but like the the kind of half and half play is unlikely. Also, your knight just does not have that much protection, so this is like overall a little sketchy. Um, yeah, and that's kind of what I expected your knight to do for damage. Power bomb's a good idea. Whoa, why are we going with lock? So, lock. Your knight is very unlikely to be able to get enough damage here to be able to get through this kraken. So I think we need to absolutely be switching to nuke, nuke, nuke. Um, kraken here has 800 to 1200 HP. Your your fighter should start power bonking. Like you're making the right decision with your fighter here, and you maybe even want the power bomb turn one. But lock is a hundred percent not the right decision. You either need to be fasting here or or doing something else. So I, I, it sounds like you know that you were supposed to make different decisions here, but this 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 execution is uh, not not good. Okay, so yeah, it was three hits, but that's as many hits as the knight's gonna have. So lock's gonna do nothing. Oh, you did get fast though. Okay, that's good. I missed who got had fast. So at this point, you'd be at about six hundred damage if you just cast nukes. And down goes your fighter. Yeah, that was. And that would be 700 da eight, 750 damage, 900 damage, over 1,000 damage. Yep, okay, so that was, yeah, obviously it just nukes was the play there. The locks you cast weren't going to do anything, and, and that's kind of what happened. So does that make sense? Um, it was once again a little bit harsh perhaps, but I feel like based off your earlier play that you're – I th I feel like I'm being meaner because I'm or like harsher because I I saw like such good play at the beginning and then it just was like th the game just like broke broke your brain or something I don't know what happened but that that just comes down to boss fight experience right and and if you're gonna all in your fighter you're all in your fighter but I think there the nuke 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 play was good which means you keep the fighter in the front row but you just needed to cast nuke every single turn with your um, mages because that fighter just was not gonna get there with the giant sword um, especially after the first. Uh, the first swing only was three hits, but let's let's go back. Like even, but your knight wasn't gonna do enough damage in time on that kraken, um, and your knight was going to get one shot by kraken. So nuke was just the play from the get go here. So that was three hits. That wasn't one hit. That was three hits, five damage. Yes, it was only five damage, but it was three hits. So that's why the the locks were were not useful. Maybe you just miss miss saw it though. In which case, that's makes more sense. In general, though, on the on all the fiends, even if this was Kraken two, the plan would still probably be fast, like swing nuke nuke. Okay, let's go into C again. Okay, you must have, okay, so if you thought that it was one, one swing, then the locks have utility. I would still argue that they're the wrong call, but at least that play makes more sense. So yeah, that, that's fair. If, if, if your plan was to go all in on your fighter, you saw one hit, you cast lock, you cast fast, you start power bonking, that is a winnable strategy on Kraken. The only issue there is then just keeping the knight in the front row. Because you're saying, my knight's going to do all the damage, but Kraken's saying, I'm going to punch your knight out, and I have the highest chance of doing the worst case scenario for you. So that that's the adjustment I, I would suggest then, if your plan is to go all in on the knight. It's a big difference if the knight's wearing dragon armor, you know? Okay, we're respecting Sea Shrine. I'm assuming you're taking these for EXP. 
that's reasonable, but I would say your party EXP is pretty decent for like this stage in the game. You're going to be able to get 3-4 levels in the sky, and for your whole party, that's okay. The issue here, I think, is that you're going to be formatting. Okay, this time you just go for it. Cool. I think the issue with your party is that you're going to be formatting for the most part, and that's not going to work out well. Yeah, so your knight has no armor at all. <laughs> Which, I mean, is fair enough, but, you know, that means that your knight is essentially a mage against Kraken with a little bit more EXP. Yeah, no, Kraken, Kraken 100% one-shots your knight, but that, that can get chalked up to um, inexperience. In Kraken punishes low um, absorb characters, right, because it has lots of hits, and those hits are usually, like, relatively high hitting, but not super high, right? They usually hit for, like, 60 damage? 60 to 80 damage, I would guess? Yeah. Maybe Kraken went a little bit lower, but, you know, your knight has just zero absorb, so one shot getting one shot is very real okay and we're leaving so i understand the thought process behind this but that kraken fight was winnable but going into your shoes for like where you were in the seat at this point you wiped out a seat a few times leaving is a reasonable decision a and i like the like decision to make the adjustment at least so that, that's good so yeah like i have lots of good like your first 20 or so minutes was like really really good and your ex your timing and things are really really solid and your menuing speed seems relatively fast your decision making speed is relatively fast um so like i think there's lots of good things happening here but of course just a couple um more like decisions that you're making that just really really cost you okay so let's go promote so a general rule of thumb that i think about when i'm promoting is to always as soon as i promote to go and do all my promotion cleanup just because it's um just just a good habit to get into yeah so you're doing that which is awesome i would have the ribbon on your knight instead of your black mage but okay so this thought process is that now i have the x cal um i'm gonna go kill kraken with that x cal right uh nope it's we're gonna go get level I feel like this is a very black belty thing to do if you're going to the spike tile here, but this is odd. So overall fighter strategies, right, is fighter strategies tend to involve formatting, then going down to a two mat, getting your life caster and your fighter high enough level to get the weapon breakpoint, and then going back to a four mat for Tofer. Ideally your knight has life and your red caster your red mage has life, and then you're in like fantastic shape if only your red mage has life and you're still in okay shape. You need a sword, you need a ribbon. Those are kind of like the, the gist of fighter strategies here. Um, okay, so we're going for the, the, the slime grind. This is a very like black belty mindset. I think this is far too slow, but I can see the logic for it. I wouldn't necessarily agree with the play, but this can work. Now, the, the issue with this, I guess, is that you're just like distributing the EXP so wide, and like in my thought process, I would be thinking go down to two man, two man sky, and then get the levels I need that way. But if you're thinking I need to four man, and you say Kraken's too scary, I need levels, this play makes sense. So I think just adding the two person uh, like party to your arsenal will help a lot no don't do it too early that's a big mistake i see people make when they start thinking about that but once you're out of the inner sea your whole party's around level 15 or so definitely consider killing off your black mages to give funnel more exp onto your knight and your red mage especially if your knight has a sword and your red mage has nuke or faith if that's the case you're almost certainly uh, good to do this and the other key thing with this is try and put casting gear on your knight and try and have a sword on your red mage those things help a lot in the two man and they're very underrated so um, those are important considerations.
but this is fine. You're determined not to wipe in C again. You've correctly identified that C is scary. We're going to go grind. Yes, it's going to cost us a, lot, a bunch of time, but it's fine. Th this is a good grind you picked, so like slimes are a good a good tile. Oh no, not like this. <laughs> okay, so you're going to warp out after this, right? Oh no, please. Okay, time to leave. Stun touch is really scary here. Um, you only have w one new cast on that mage, and yeah. Okay. Little greedy, but I mean, this is still probably fine. The issue here is if your bottom black mage gets stun touched, you're just in a lot of trouble. But, okay. I'm assuming you're thinking I'm just going to go until I run out of nukes. But like ambushing is pretty scary here. If your bottom black mage gets stun touched, this is going to be real bad. Okay, let's let's leave. Okay. <laughs> We're fine. <laughs> so, the issue here like is a lot of this is 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 EXP distribution, right? Black mages just don't Levels don't really matter on them past level 16 or 17 unless you need high level spells. And this is just like a ton of EXP that you would much rather, like almost always you want an unbalanced party. Um, so that, that's just like a, a general concept, but this, this is fine. So you got your levels. I'm not sure, uh, you're looking for temper, that's fair. That's life two in the red mage learnable slot, that's huge. And also the other good thing about this is that your knight just got all the cure four charges, so that's really good. You haven't bought cure four yet, but yeah. Also, that's really sketchy. Why? Why have we <laughs> not healed her? <laughs> I was going to mention that after you healed, I noticed you didn't go outside and house again. It's not your um, dead characters don't recover ho charges when you house. Um, so yeah, but. This is probably fine regardless. So, yeah, the the ribbon on your black mage is probably a mistake here. I think you need that ribbon on the knight, but otherwise things are going to be okay. So your knight still has no armor here. So if you're going to all in on your knight, your knight needs to go down. Hey, there we go. Good stuff. So double lock probably I think I think you've overcompensated for lock. The only fiends I usually cast locked on are Tia and Chaos like in advance, but I know that you thought you missed a lot earlier, so it's fair, but on av no, no, you have, yeah, you have Opal Gauntlet, which is no armor. Like, you know, if you have an opal, you know, it's an opal helm. It's like 10 or 11 absorb. It's worse than a chain armor. Chest plate is so much of your absorb that without it, you're you're like a mage in terms of armor or worse, right? Like, I think opal helmet is like 8 absorb or something crazy like that. Like, really, really, really low. So, um, your, your knight's basically unarmored still at this point. Um, anyways, uh, lock, for the most part, on fiends that... So, uh, how do I describe this? So on fiends like Kraken 1 and Carry 1 and 2 and Lich 1 and 2, you want to calculate how many turns it's going to take for you to get them dead, right? And there is a side consideration of what happens if my mage get punched turn 1 or my mages get nuke turn 1, and then that's where going a little bit more on your fighter matters. But without nuke in the pool for Kraken, Kraken is at most killing one mage here, right? And if it turn orders, it's going to be nuke, two nukes turn 1, and one nuke turn 2. That's dead worst scenario. Nuke's going to average about 200 damage a hit, which means 600 damage you're getting just from nukes if you only cast nuke. Now, that's not quite enough, so your fighter does need to contribute, so I think the play here would be something like fast nuke nuke, or just nuke 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 still. Um, 
depending on how much you want your fighter to be able to do damage. You can also do something like nuke, nuke, power bonk, nuke. Uh, those are all considerations. But essentially, you want to kill Kraken on turn two. That's the, that's the key to this whole thing. And in order to do so, y more nukes rather than a longer term battle is good. If you're going to do longer term battles, you generally need to also be going a bit more defensive. So you need ribbons, you need invis stacks, you need defense swords, you need ruse, all that stuff. So fights that are partially offensive and partially set up, but no defensive is usually the most dangerous place to be because then you're just relying on them for doing nothing for multiple turns. So either kill them fast or set up, get safe, and then kill them slow. But setting up slowly without defense is really dangerous. So try and avoid that middle ground, if that makes sense. Oh, God. Oh, it, never mind. It hit your red mage. Okay. Okay, well, Kraken goes down. Turn two works. But of course, your levels are massive here, and most of the time when you're killing Kraken, you're going to be lower level than that. But in, in general, that's just like thoughts, and especially for the early fiends. Like, for most of the early fiends, your plan is just going to be nuke. Like, for all the f first fiends, except for maybe Tia, it's just nuke, 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 nuke. Oh, you're going to get looped, aren't you? This I don't blame you. You mentally said I'm translating the slab like way, way back, and then you didn't, but this happens. It's a little unfortunate, but... Yeah. I hope I gave you some, like, some ways that the sea shrine dive could have been avoided or, like, prevented. Like, that was definitely a sea shrine that you could have gone through on your first try. Um, it, it just, or maybe your second try at most. A little unfortunate, but... I hope I gave you like some actual stra tangible strategies as well as some heuristics that you can use the next time that you're in a similar situation. Like it's not just like the exact play here, but like the thought process to get to a different play. Um, and, and we can talk about that more in the in like the post uh, VOD review part. Oh, this is going to be so sad. Because, like, I think almost all of that Sea Shrine was preventable. I think the only thing that wasn't is that, like, the worst case scenario, I think, for if you had played it a little bit, um, if you had played it a little bit differently, I think the worst case scenario is you get baned, only your knight survives, and then you're probably screwed. So I think the first wipe, the first wipe happens. But after that, oh no, all that EXP, you just lost it too. Okay, so this is once again. Now, before, you said you did C because you wanted equipment, right? But at this point, you don't need equipment. You have all the equipment you need. So doing Sky before you do Lefane to check, because once again, Lefane could just be key to loot, and then you don't need to open any boxes in Sky, I think is 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 incorrect. I know that you like kind of are doubling down on your mistake, and if this is key to loot, then you're good. But I, I guess it just comes back to like this could be a potentially huge time loss. and like. One of the goals of this flag set is when you're in go mode, you don't want to full clear sea and sky if you can avoid it. And that was especially true in the pods, but it's even more true now with monster in a box as well, right? Sun plus one, not bad. Zeus, not bad. Uh, you want to be using warp here, unless you're trying to get levels, but because you're not taking fights. So yeah, don't... Warp is one of the best spells in Mirage and Sky in general. Uh, you always want to warp out of Mirage 1, and then you want to use uh, Warp on Sky 1, left and right, and Sky 3, top, right, and sometimes left. And then, again, you can use Warp when you're clearing the other side of Sky 2. Now, there's lots of religious debates over um, what how you want to be clearing Sky, but I'll, I'll see what you do, and then I can provide suggestions. Don't forget that Ice 3 is effective against Chimeras, and uh, Ice 3 can do more damage than Nuke, so... Probably should be casting it instead of nuke, but it's pretty minor. Unfortunate. I think all running is fine here. Mummies with glance. That is going to be not fun. Hopefully you find a soft. These have Bane, right? Ice 3, not good against these dragons, but it will do the trick. So your EXP distribution, right? 
I mean, I know it's unfortunate you have no softs anymore, but it's actually kind of the dead opposite of what you want at this point, in that your mages are getting levels and your melee character isn't. Oh. Oh, no, it doesn't work. Okay, so you're going to go get softs? Okay. Unfortunate, but this happens. And no softs here. Oh, is Worms with main? Okay. Looking for temper? Okay, this is reasonable. You're gonna, your mages are such high level that you're going to have casts of temper, so I think this is totally fine to actually take a look at this level 7 magic. Funnily enough, you still haven't checked level 6 magic. <laughs> it just so happened that there was nothing there, but kind of of note. Go by cure four, right? Okay, so this is your black belt showing. The fact that knights can learn white magic is one of the most powerful things things about them. Um, I mean, there's lots of things that make knights really, really powerful, but knights with cure four, right? Imagine your solo to solar solo chaos. Your knight is on turn four because you you haven't killed it yet, but you know chaos punches you and you're down to 200 HP. Well, now you can cast cure four, go up to 700. And then you can take two more punches and get a punch, and then you can cure for yourself again. So the fact that knights can learn cure for is huge, um, and you can just pick it up for free while you're in Canary Net there. Now, I think what's happening here is you're on a single threaded mindset, right? And this is something I see a lot, um, so it's not uncommon, and it's really, like, really normal. But I think it actually comes back, if I'm going to use the heuristic approach rather than, like, this specific mistake, when you promote, go buy your knight spells. It's not as ultimately efficient as it could be, but it's better than forgetting. And if your knight picks up life or picks up cure four, it could save a dive, which will end up saving you way more time than just like flying back and forth, right? Because the flying doesn't take very much time. Oh, whoa, whoa, you waited so long to promote. No, but like one charge of cure four is massive. Like the difference between zero charge of the cure four and one charge of cure four is huge. Like, imagine the difference between zero charges of life and one charge of life on the knight, right? It's, it's massive. Like, cure four and life in particular are two two words that, or t I was reading correctly, comment, uh, are two spells that are worth one charge is, like, massive. Like, there's, there's flag sets which nerf the knight to the point where they no longer have, like, they have one spell charge only. And in that case, it's still worthwhile to pick up cure four and life too. So, uh, yeah, really important uh, play pattern for, for the knights. Uh, picking up gold bracelets? The silver bracelets are fine. Uh, we do have S SATs, but I have never written one in my life. Um, so this is just, just a small note. Whenever I'm preparing to do a big shop like that, I just open my armor menu and drop items first rather than sell them. Money just doesn't matter, right, at this point, but that's fine. P pretty small, small thing. Uh, Yeah, my partner had, or maybe it was a GRE. I don't know. I had to help her study for it, so. Maybe, yeah, don't, maybe it's not SATs. Maybe it's GREs. I don't know. Standardized admission test things. Okay, I like this earth play. Um, this is good proximity routing. Hey, and you go the fast way. Although these bottom of walls don't give you free steps, so I think that was just a misinput there. So so far the seed has mostly been defined by that sea dive, but then you know a couple other unfortunate things have occurred as well. You definitely have the execution. Um, to, to do well, and I mean, it shows because you, you've done well in, in the spring tournament so far, even going so far as to knock two players out. Um, but um, I think the decision-making still is is, uh, is is a little bit of improving, or still requires a little bit of improvement. But the fact that you're making decisions fast is really, really good. I'm just hoping to give you some like quick concepts that you can make those decisions off better. And I think the big ones so far are just um, boss fights and then high level like fighter strategies like how you want a fighter sheet to sh be shaped ideally and then of course you can 
change around that. Yeah, exactly. He made two people quit. <laughs> If he keeps doing so well, though, he's going to burn his Duck Derby eligibility. Volcano time? Whoa, no! Okay, so there is, of course, a very, very small chance that the key's here, but... Oh, no. I think you said you knew this, too. So you recognize this is a mistake, right? And you're just doing it in the in the heat of the moment because you forgot? I don't need to explain like inner C incentive locations and things like that. I'm just watching, sorry, my chat's on my right screen. So whatever I'm looking to the right, it's because I'm looking at chat. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm not getting a response, so I'll just quickly go through it, right? So the ship and the canal are guaranteed to be in the inner sea. Therefore, if you haven't gotten the ship and canal yet, and there's only two incentive locations left, it will be it will eventually lead to the ship and canal. But the key is a specific um, item in that it can be behind the key. So really, really keep that in mind, because you can get burned super hard if you forget that the you know, the place that you like crossed off of your brain um, can have the key. So the reason I mentioned that is because you're going to last location and that's fine, but you just need to make sure that you remember that it's a possibility. So that way when it occurs, you don't panic. You just like, okay, it's key to ship. I'm going to go do marsh or it's key to ship. I'm going to go do ice and that's fine. So just keep that in mind. But it sounds like you, you know that. Um, so I'm so used to the black belt that my playstyle basically entails mages for trash mobs, mainly for bosses, and carry that over to my fire. Okay. Even with the black... See, that's funny that you say that, because even with the black belts, I find more often than not I'm nuking bosses, because my black belt grind isn't done yet, and I was forced into C early or something like that. So that's interesting, but maybe you're just always getting a black belt grind off early, which is really good. Um, so if you knew ship and canal were most likely ice and marsh, were you doing this just for the key? But... You still need the loot, right? Which means that the slab turn in is going to be required, or slab or sky are going to be required, even if these one of these do turn into the key. Oh, it's okay. Okay. Oh, you forgot. Okay. Okay. You forgot. That's you forgetting is an okay answer. Um, the, the, the answer of, you know, this is the thought process. That's what I would want to, would have wanted to go over. But if it's just, I forgot, that's a mistake that we all make. And, you know, saying, oh, don't forget. That's, you know, not a, not a helpful or instructive comment. So yeah, not a big deal. So yes, that's a fruit chest. No, my least favorite. Okay, so my least favorite check, the armory check. Um, yes, the Excal isn't great here, but your levels are fairly good. You have life on your red mage now. You have fast on three mages, and you have the power bonk. You're lacking evasion a little bit, but the bigger thing you're going to find is a defense rather than a sword. Um, and you still have boxes in sky to open, so I would almost certainly be check be skipping this. You also have temper. Overall, I just think at this point you have to be saying, I'm good with the items I have with a ribbon, with the Excal, with fast and tempers. But if you feel like you need more gear, so be it. it as you said, though, it looks like you're just like starting to practice with fighters a little bit. So um, that might be intuitive to me, but not, might not be so intuitive to you. And like getting a good feel for when enough gear is good enough will be something that takes practice. But generally speaking, Vorpal Massa, Excal that's not minus, um, Ribbon, Power Bonk's a big plus, especially if you don't have Temper. Defense is a, nice to have. If you don't have Defense, Invis 2 is good. If you don't have Invis 2 or Defense, 
having ways to buff your fighter so you can kill them dead fast is good, in which case you have all of that, so I think it's uh, a good thing. But my, I guess just to go through that again slowly, you need a weapon. Excal, not minus. Masa, basically anything, although ideally not minus 5. And Vorpal plus, or Vorpal anything if you have a lot of fast tempers and evasion. Um, you want one ribbon, ideally on your life caster, but in this case the Red Mage can't equip it, so ribbon on your knight is going to be important because you don't have wall and then you know power bonk or temper in some source lock in some source and fast if you have it is a big benefit and if you have some of these lacking you have to see if you have things to make it up on the other side it's kind of like a cup and you picture each of these as bringing it up now it's not quite accurate because some of them are more important than the others like if you have no sword basically well that's not true if you have no sword the combination of the others can balance it but that's kind of the things that you're putting into equation you're looking for like a critical mass of i can kill the bosses fast enough or i can kill them safe enough um okay hey we found the bridge okay so we got a masa which is really good why are we so th this is something i've talked about a lot in my vod reviews but it comes down to what are we opening boxes for? And at this point, with the Masa found, a Vorpal's not really an upgrade, so you're really just looking for a second ribbon or the defense, which I think is like way too unlikely. So I'm assuming you're just going to be finishing the armory, then you're going to be done with boxes. But um, yeah. In this case, at the levels you're at, I would just warp there instead of exiting. Uh, yes, saving is nice, but like it doesn't really matter. Also, I think it's good to point out at this point that that early, early decision to save, like, six hundred dollars in provoca means you haven't had heal three this whole seed and you've burned heal pots twice you've gone through your entire heal pot cash twice and you still don't have lock at level two which means that your uh black mages will be using your nuke slots for locks which is kind of a double whammy so um yeah Ma magic basically always a good investment and he don't undervalue heal three because all the time that you spent heal potting using buying heal pots all that stuff really really adds up Okay, so at least you didn't do Marsh. That's good. I'm assuming what happened is that you did Ice. That triggered your memory to say, oh, right, Marsh needs to be the... Marsh must be the canal, most likely, unless it's the key. So then you're going to go do the Slab turn in. Uh, ty single Tyros actually aren't worth that much EXP, but it's fine. Um... So your, your levels are very unfortunate because your black mages are level 29 and your knight's level 27, so a little bit backwards, but it's okay. Bottle. Good use of warp. I find a lot of uh, newer players, they um, <laughs> only use warp in dungeons and don't use warp in, in towns, so that's good. Good step efficient routing. Don't forget, once again, steps into and out of water are free steps. Now, if you knew that your encounter table was perfect and you were just counting that that was going to be a free run, so be it. But um, if you walk like this, you can save some steps. So once again, um, you don't need gear. Your goal is to hit go mode. You don't want a full clear sky. It could still be key to loot. So you, you turn the bottle in then you turn the key in if it's the key first before you go to sky um, because uh, once again you don't want a full clear sky just because of how slow it is and the fact you already have gear right yeah i mean lots of people forget about warp a lot i i actually like forget when i don't have warp because i like suffer my brain like hates it so much <laughs> but yeah forgetting is fine just knowing it's an option and like trying to add a mental trigger. Like I have a brain trigger every time I talk to Matoya, every time I talk to Sages, every time I talk to Sarda, every time I talk to the Lefain guy, every time I talk to the, excuse me, the fairy, where my, my brain says warp and then I like evaluate, do I have it or not? So that's a really good habit to build up. It's like, you're always trying to warp out of that. Same thing with TNT, Adamant. Like basically after I do any fetch quest turn in, my brain says warp. So there's lots of ways to route Sky, but I think this one's just strictly wrong. Um, 
Eh, I guess, no, I, no, it's strictly wrong. With warp, this is strictly wrong because you want to make your higher percentage plays first. It's equal steps to here as it is to the right and the left and the chest density is so much higher. With warp, you're going to be warping back to the middle anyways, which means it's equal steps to either side. So this is just not the correct play. You want to go right or left first. There's a debate on whether or not you skip this chest until the very end, but that's a different debate. But the fact that you went there first on this floor, I'd say, is, is, is incorrect. Why would you skip that chest until the end? Okay, that's... So the, the logic behind it is that it's a lot of steps for one box. If you route it so that you're going left, right, left side, sky, um, then up, right, left, and then you go back, sky two, then you actually end up at the stairs there anyways, and you can warp and just go down and check it relatively fast anyways with taking minimal extra steps. I check it when I'm on sky one, but I know that some people do that, and I think it's fair enough for like I think it's not so bad that I'm okay to say it's just a stylistic choice yeah I think without warp you almost you definitely shouldn't do that with warp I can see the argument uh, I don't like this on the sky spider floor it's not efficient with warp you want to be going down one side and then the other once again there, there's stylistic differences but then there's also just like strictly faster step counts um, and going back and forth across this room is time consuming. Oh, but it looks like you're kind of sticking. We'll see what. Yeah, I, I clear sky the same way every time. I do right, then left, then bottom, then left side sky two, then up, then right, then left, then right side sky two. That's how I do it every single time, but people you know, are allowed to have their own preferences. I try and make the plays that I feel like are the most mathematically correct, but I'm sure I have some things which I just do by habit that are not so. But yeah, here here it's it's um, inefficient to just walk like the the, st the steps that you're taking walking back and forth are are quite slow. So you actually want to be going down just one side and then warping instead. Uh, faster to go up there, but I'm assuming that's just a execution error. So your levels are high enough at this point, obviously. Um, you're one. Unfortunately, oh, you have the mass of minus three, which the breakpoint is twenty-five. Uh, there are six chests to the right in Sky 3. I go up first as well. But yeah, I think right first is fine. I think right first is not fine if you don't have warp, but I think right first in general is fine. Uh, nope, you still haven't equipped the red, the sun sword. But I don't think that's that big of a deal. It would be a huge deal if you were two manning, but with a full four-person party, eh, it's fine. Okay, that is the first chest armor you've equipped on your knight, which is <laughs> deeply unfortunate, but um, so be it. Okay, so you're skipping boxes now, which is good. Wait. Yeah, I'm assuming you got the white shirt. And the, yeah, yeah, okay. So this does mean that sky just wasn't required. So now I don't want to be, you know, results oriented, but I think it was just the incorrect play regardless of what was in sky to do sky before the bottle turn in. So, but here you spent a lot of extra minutes full clearing it for basically no benefit. I think you're slightly overvaluing Locke. Um, Locke is only really good against... Um, Locke is really only good against like later fiends. Warmech can be that case though. And Warmech's another boss which has relatively capped HP, 1000 to 1500, so like 
I don't know why you were casting lit threes there. Like just nukes are probably the way to go. I think it's okay though to go fast, you know, go a little bit more on your knight turn first turn, but then after that I think just nukes are are what you're looking for. Oh goodness. Holy smokes. Oh boy. These are the beefiest black mages. Your black mage has 400 HP. <laughs> I was just about to... Actually, it was funny. I was going to say earlier that Brack on your black mages was a really questionable thing to buy at level 7, but there you go. <laughs> um, yeah. So, I just want to go way back to the very, very, very beginning of the seed. This is actually the exact reason why I always set, I used to set my party up this way, and now I always set my party up with the Red Mage in slot 4. And it's exactly this reason. Yes, you got super lucky with a Brack, but in any ambush scenario, I want my life caster to live, and I often forget to do it later in the seed. And like a lot of my gameplay is about making decisions earlier rather than later, so that way my my monkey brain, my dumb monkey brain, doesn't have to make like a stressful decision correctly. Instead, my calm habit forming brain is able to make the decision ahead of time that puts me in better situations. And that's why I have heuristics like buy my spells once I promote. Think about warp whenever I turn an incentive item, etc., etc. And that's one of the reasons why I put my red mage in the bottom slot at the very, very beginning. Yes, I'm giving up a little bit of absorb in the early game, but very, very rarely does having an extra black mage up make or break a dive. But almost always having my life caster up does. So, yes, war mech happened. I don't 100% agree with your lit three plays, and if you went nuke, 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 he might have died first, which is another adjustment. But having the red mage in slot four here, I think, would have been huge. So that that goes way, 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 way back to the very, very beginning of the seed. Um, so just a note. Also, your levels are really odd. <laughs> level 32 black mages and level 27 fighters. I, I I know it's just the way that the seeds worked out, but it's very, very against like the, the, the goal of the fighter comp. 85% um, of my fighter comps look like weapon breakpoint level fighter, red mage the same level as the fighter, and then black mages that are like level 16 to 20. So this is your fourth time buying heal pots, which is partially why the um, yeah, these black mages think about swinging the exile at this point, or the massive for that matter. Um, yeah. So this is really, really unfortunate because. So outside of your C play you still probably lose the seed by 15 or 20 minutes to a vet because of the incentive location being like you were in go mode the moment you were in the air and you could have known you were in go mode the moment you were in the air if you without and then C and sky were both not required and neither was ordeals um and neither was ice so like that's four extra dungeons of full clears and you had the x cal the ribbon you wouldn't have had the ribbon unless you cleared ski, so maybe you know they don't find that or they do check those chests. But the decision making, you delayed your information so much that the decision making, the decisions you made were not optimal, and you could have gotten that dis that information for a much lower cost than what not having that information cost you. I think overall, the decision was incorrect, but um, yeah, but and obviously, and there was oh my goodness, and there was a free ribbon here too. Okay, I take back the C thing. Now there's just a free ribbon for everyone. And a dragon armor, which is unfortunate because you wouldn't have gotten the tail if you didn't full clear C shrine, but. Um, so this is, I think, your black belt thinking again, but I really want to emphasize your knight is everything. It needs to have a ribbon on. The, the, uh, the MDEF on your knight is not nearly the same as the black belt. Um, and your levels will often not be as high, so the the ribbon absolutely has to be on your primary melee damage dealer here, because, well, you've done it a few times, but it, for the most part, if you're stuck on a boss with just the black mage up, you're screwed. If you're stuck in Topher with just your black mages up, you're screwed. But if you're stuck in Topher with your knight up, you can still often win, and a lot of the times the knight will have, well, not a lot of the time, but some of the time the knight will have life as well. So ribbon, 
top priority is your life caster, second priority is your knight. I know your red mage can't have a ribbon here, but that knight should 100% be have a ribbon because the black mages they just cast fast and die, and that's that's fine. So Topher prep-wise, you're good, except for no cure 4 on your knight. Also, still unfortunate you don't have heal 3 on your, your red mage, but uh, cure 4 is going to be enough, and your party's massively over-leveled here, so... Like, your overall party's massively over-leveled here, so I think this dive should be relatively safe. It's probably unfortunate, because I feel like you've probably gotten a lot better since you did the seed. I know that your times have been going down rapidly, and you've probably already internalized a lot of what I've been saying here. But hopefully you're able to pick up one or two new pieces of information that will that will help you. As I said, I feel like I've been a little bit harsher than I am normally. But it's because I see like flashes of brilliance in your... Well, I see flashes of like really, really good stretches of decisions, and then just like some very odd decisions so uh, those odd decisions stand out more versus like when i'm watching like a really really new runner like everything is kind of all over the place so it's a lot like you know just okay this is the adjustment here this is the adjustment here so generally speaking i don't use nuke on lich but you have enough casts here it doesn't matter because your black mages are massive but if you only have three or four casts of nuke don't use nuke on lich if you get if you got get nuked it's unfortunate just either reset or or try again if you have enough cast, if you have enough cast of fast, though, I would use fast on Lich. So it's like fast, fire three, fire three, or something like that is what most of my nukes, my, my Liches look like. Yeah, <laughs> I wish I could shave 20 minutes off my average in a week. <laughs> huh, that's a cheeky cure four play. I would have just used a pure, but fair enough. On carry, the play is almost always, like, 95% of carry should just be swing, nuke, nuke, nuke. Her relatively low HP total means that the nuke strats are really effective against her. So Kraken... Um, so this is actually a place where you could keep your... Uh, knight in the front row because of how well armored it is. The fact that your knight now has like 60 absorb means that your knight could very well stay in the front slot. Um, I would still probably move it to slot 2 and move a black mage up because your black mages just don't matter. Your life caster absolutely needs to be in the back row here though. Let's see what you decide to do. Whoa, okay, so, so yeah, 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 yeah. This red mage being in slot 2 has just killed you this whole seed. Like, I... You're probably fine here, but this is this is very, very dangerous. This is your life caster. This is how you can get your party back up to full strength after this fight's over. It's the one character you... I mean, other than your knight, you really don't want these two to die. So this, if your knight's not going to be in slot 2 because it's extremely well armored, it your your red mage should certainly be in slot four, three, uh, 4 here, or 3 or 4. So, yeah. Uh, also, over once again, overvaluing lock... I like lock sometimes, but this either should be nuke, like either nuke or temper here, not lock originally. Maybe one cast of lock might help, but almost certainly not two. Okay, so this is this is the all in on the knight strategy again, but with no uh, evasion. It's quite dangerous. It probably will work because your party's over leveled, but if it goes punch, punch, and you know punch turn one turn order punch turn two you're going to be in a lot of trouble for the rest of tofu here so this might work but the overall viability of it is not great um if it goes punch punch you would much rather be in a situation where you cast nuke or cast temper rather than cast lock but kraken's probably yeah it's just i was literally going to say kraken's probably going to cast lit too Okay, there's the nuclear. Okay, this is going to be a one-shot. Oh, no, not quite. Your hesitancy to use nuke is very odd here, but it's okay. 
this that type of decision making is like the thing that's not going to get punished all the time but i think it does get punch, punished once in a time so i think just altering your boss strats just a little bit is going to be an important uh adjustment for you to make they're not terrible but i think you've really really played a lot of black belt <laughs> same thing here um one the twilight party pack could have ambushed you on the way there and killed your life caster which would have been a disaster they also could have killed your black mage which would have been a disaster so respect the sky floor move your knight up um two once again your life casters in slot two but you've already kind of made that decision so going the same on tia but tia is a person in 95 percent of seeds with this much armor i would put my knight in slot two tia is almost certainly not two shotting my knight here um at this this scaling so i'd, I'd like the black belt knight red mage black mage alignment here once again overvaluing lock but you're making the same strategy on tia as kraken which i think is okay here I have said in other videos that I would rather get one lot cast off because I can temper later, but that only applies when um, that only applies when you have um, the defense or evasion. When you don't have defense or evasion, the priority is to kill it as fast as possible, and temper is going to do that more often than lock. Oh my goodness. Okay, so down goes your life caster. That's unfortunate. There's nothing you could have done there. Wall was inaccessible, inaccessible, and you had no ribbons. So that just happens. I'm not sure why you're not casting nuke still, but your 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 knight's gonna get it done. Once again, getting ambushed by Twilight Party Pack would be really bad, especially there, right? I think something to take away is the sky floor is very very scary. Um, in many cases, the vampire the the Twilight Fan Club is more dangerous than Tiamat. So, if you wouldn't walk into Tiamat with no life caster, with you know like this, that black mage could have just died to a random ambush, and that would have been like really really bad for this chaos fight. Uh, so here's my thought on black belt. I don't think black belts teach you how to play the game very well. I think black belts teach you how to play black belts, which is a unique skill set, but black belts are a very, very specific niche skill set versus I think fighter comps teach you a wider variety of gameplay and a lot more uh, nuanced decision making, especially on boss strategies. So that's why I teach black belts in the Duck Derby, but I teach black belts as like black belt week. And then every other week is like, not fighter weeks, but like every other week is like more overall strategy. But like black belt week is black belt week. Black belts do one thing. Black belts grind and black belts kill Topher without you having to think. Um, so it's good that you've tried to learn some fighter comps here. This alignment is good for chaos. Uh, your ribbon not being on your knight here is a disaster. If chaos opens with a non, uh, like you have good armor on it, so but like this could be really, really bad if your knight gets zapped or something. It doesn't have poison resistance either, so Bane is a concern. Oh yeah, I mean, black belts were racing for... Uh, my comment on black belts is not that black belts are bad. My comment on black belts is that black belts don't teach you to play a lot of elements of the game, notably Topher. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you also are going to need to practice Thieves, and you're going to need to practice playing with White Mages. This is a good good strategy overall here. A situation like this is where Cure 4 is really handy, by the way. Um, you didn't need it here, but things like that where you get punched. If you're doing 1,000 damage, you swing, but if you're doing 500, you need to go with Cure 4 next and hope that Chaos doesn't uh, punch you. GG's, congratulations. Um, well, I hope I've given you a bunch of stuff to think about. I think overall, the big takeaways, just high level fighter comps, four man, want to get down to two man, hit your fighter um, break points. Um, put your ribbons on your fighter, please, please, please put your ribbons on your fighter. Move your life caster out of slot two. It's very, very dangerous. Uh, prioritize, buy your spells on your knight. It's really important, especially Cure 4, Life. Those are the two big ones. Ruse also, something I would always keep a note of. Um, yeah, I, I think those are the, the big takeaways. And I think the higher level routing decision, and this is actually for black belt comps as well, which is get information before you open boxes. Like if you were a black belt comp here, maybe you were over adjusting to fighters, thinking if I was a black belt comp, I'm going to do all the, the key items first, and I'm going to do dungeons later. But on a fighter comp, so I'm going to do the dungeons first. But 
fighters still don't want to open all the boxes. Fighters want to open enough boxes to get their gear and then no more boxes. Because the way that you beat black belt comps, although that's no longer the case, but let's say it's fighter black belt and you're deciding which one to use. The way the fighter wins is by opening the same amount of boxes, getting the gear it needs, and then not grinding. And then getting through Topher with um, better Topher strategies. So... Yeah, and then to go into the sea dive, I think it's just, you know, whether it's nerves or just, like, brain shutting down for, like, a little period of time because things were going badly, but just, like, better prep, um, healing, respecting enemies once you know that they have something scary. Um, yeah, I think I think that's pretty much it. Do you have any questions or anything? I, I hope I wasn't too harsh. I, I know I, I do feel like I was a little bit harsher this time than I have been in sometimes in the past, but... Hopefully you, you got some, some takeaways from it. And obviously your fighter times are have been going down quite a bit. But I'm not seeing anything in chat, but if you have any other questions for me, uh Feel free to DM them to me. Oh, no. Okay, awesome. Okay, yeah, sweet. So, yeah, thanks a lot for everyone who hung out, and I hope you all have a 